Welcome to CUBE Conversations, a series on data protection. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon. The purpose-built backup appliance is now more than $3 billion annually, according to IDC. That's bigger than the entire tape market was prior to data deduplication hitting the scene. We're here with Nancy Majors, the Associate Director of Disaster Recovery and Storage at Brown University, to talk about how data protection is evolving. Nancy, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for coming on. Hi, thanks, Ed. So tell us a little bit about uh, what you're doing down at Brown University and your role there. Uh, well, I'm the Associate Director of Disaster Recovery and Storage Services here at Brown University. We're in Providence, Rhode Island. Um, Brown's a member of the Ivy League. Um, this is a special year at Brown because uh, we're celebrating our 250th year. So we have a little legacy around to support, so we know some stuff about that. Um, our community is about 20,000. We have uh, 20,000 faculty, staff, and student is, uh, represents our entire community. Uh, that's kind of where I'm, uh, I'm, that's a little bit about me and where I'm coming from. So we, we love Brown University, we love the Ivy League, New England. You know, we feel smarter just talking to you guys. So, so thanks again for coming on. So, so tell me a little bit about, let's take us back. Uh, we were talking uh, earlier about uh, your sort of recent experiences in, in data protection. Take us back to sort of pre-2009, maybe you could describe your, your environment. What was keeping you up at night back then? Right, um, pre prior to 2009, um, we had an aging data center. Our, our data center had been built in the, um, the early 1980s and um, the technology and the, the power and cooling needs have changed dramatically since then. Um, and we did not have uh, the funds basically to build a new data center. So um, that, uh, not having enough uh, power and cooling to keep our servers running um, was a big concern for me. Uh, additionally, we were running backups to tape. Um, we would send those tapes to an off-site storage company. Um, and we never really even knew whether or not we could recover our data from those tapes. We had never actually tested doing a data recovery from those tapes. Um, Every now and then we would have to recover some data and we could get one or two pieces back, but we never um, looked at recovering an entire uh, service and large amounts of data that we were putting out onto tape. So it comes 2009 and the university um, had some plans to um, give us some resources to help fix our data center. And, and in doing so, um, we had to rebuild our data center essentially from the ground up while keeping it running in the same facility. So that's a pretty scary thought to somebody whose job it is, is to protect the data, um, knowing that I'm going to have all of my power and cooling and raised floor and um, walls around my systems replaced live. Um, so uh, we raised this as a concern, as a risk to the project to update the data center is that without a, a sufficient business continuity plan and disaster recovery planning, that we weren't really comfortable rebuilding the data center live without having that in place. So the university um, allocated funds as part of the project to implement a business continuity um, program as well as a disaster recovery program so that we could recover those applications that they deemed critical in a timely manner um, should something go wrong with our construction project or going forward, um, there was a lot going on in the world at that time with uh, a lot of uh, bad things happening with uh, Katrina and all sorts of stuff that raised uh, disaster recovery as. So, okay, so you didn't have a lot of confidence in your, your backup environment. You, you couldn't test it adequately. No. Nope. Uh, maybe you could check a box for the compliance people, but that, that right, <laughs> you, exactly. you knew in your heart that, that there was right. a potential exposure there. Is that right? Absolutely, and, we, and the business hadn't really defined those needs either. We had been backing things up, but if your business doesn't tell you what's really critical and how fast they need that back, then you're kind of making a guess there. So was it fair to say you kind of had a, a, a one-size-fits-all backup yes, strategy at the time? Exactly. So, so we backed up everything. We did a nightly backup. We went to tape. We kept a copy of the tape on site, and a, and the copy of the tape went uh, off site to that 
mountainous tape storage. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so talk about what you did, what, what changed, what's, what's your technology look like today? Give us the before and after. Right, so before, uh, obviously, we had a giant tape library and we had no disaster recovery program. Um, 2009, we implemented a disaster recovery program, which allowed us to set up a secondary data center at um, uh, in New York. Uh, we are in Providence, so that's uh, pretty uh, geographically di uh, diverse, but it's not as much as some people would, might like. Um, we replicate our critical data from Providence to uh, New York using EMC products. We use EMC SRDF for our uh, databases and our mainframe. We use EMC Recover Point for our critical VMware environment. Um, and we use EMC data domain for our uh, network backup. So we no longer ship that copy on tape out to that mountain. Everything is just kept within our own network so we don't have to worry about the security of our data leaving our data centers because it does never leave. It's, it's always in our data centers. So you have no tape, is that correct? That's correct. Yes, oh, everything. Okay. Is... Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so okay, uh, talk a little bit about um, what results you found? I mean, talk maybe a little bit more color on on the, the the business impact. You said earlier that the business really wasn't involved in in the backup. How did you get them involved, and and how right. involved are they today? Yeah. So um, you know, we 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 let them know that we're going to be doing construction, and the, you know, there was a real potential for us to um, take down their services. Uh, cutting water mains and, and things like that. So they really understood that there was a real, a real um, potential for us to create a disruption in their services. And, they, and we, said, we told them, we said, we need you to tell us what the criticality of these services are. And we came up with a rating scheme for them of recovery time objectives and recovery point objectives. We gave them um, multiple locations where we kind of wanted them to land, you know, uh, immediate, uh, no data loss or a 24-hour data loss is it was kind of our targets for them, um, and then we gave them varying recovery time objectives from two to four hours all the way out to a week. You know, for how long it t would take us to actually get their systems back should there be a critical event in our data center. Um, we then. Um, made sure that we had all of our data replicated, we made sure we had systems in place to do this, and then we started a disaster recovery program where we test all of these services, our, our, our um, 33 critical business systems are tested annually on a, uh, we do a 48-hour um, disaster recovery testing where we stand up all of our services and we do this in an isolated network, so we're not doing it live, I'm not actually sending all my uh, traffic from Providence down to New York. But we stand up all of our services as if it was a disaster. We do it in an isolated network and we have our users actually come into that isolated network and validate that the services are running within that network um, to their satisfaction. So it really, um, it, we now know that um, our services are recoverable, we're meeting our windows, and our users have validated that that's the case. So was the financial impact largely one of, of risk reduction? Uh, did you look at other factors, like how much you're just spending on the overall infrastructure? I wonder if you could share just some quick information uh, it, there. It, it, was, it was primarily the risk reduction, and it was also, um, it, it, it allowed it, in the short run, it was risk reduction. In the long term, it's also you know it's also brought our costs down in in ways that we might not have uh, expected. Not having to buy tapes, you know, it, the the disc the disc systems actually end up to be more cost effective in the long run running on disc with deduplication than running on tape. Um, your mileage may vary on that, but in our environment that is the case. It's actually more cost effective for us to put it on disk with deduplication um, than it is to send it out to tape. So Nancy, as it relates to data protection, what's on your to-do list? What are you looking at going forward? Key initiatives? Maybe talk yeah, about that a little bit. Yeah, um, we have a really large um, unstructured data. Uh, we have about a petabyte of unstructured data, which is like file systems and stuff like that. Um, recovering of that using a traditional backup system, which is it, this this is one of those applications that falls within our 24-hour type recovery. Um, 
recovering that type of an environment using a traditional backup is almost impossible because we have like a petabyte of data. So um, we've moved, we're moving to an EMC Isilon uh, system using Isilon Sync IQ to sync that data directly down to um, our disaster recovery place site in New York. Uh, this is giving us a great advantage on those unstructured data stores that um, we're actually able to raise the um, recovery time objectives and recovery point objectives on those services um, to uh, what we consider a priority one type services. So basically these are a read-only copy of this data is available at any time at our rem remote locations. So. so we're up against the clock, but if, if I understand it correctly, you've gone from a one-size-fits-all to a data protection as a service environment, which is not trivial, uh, especially yeah. getting the business involved. What's the one, last question, what's the one piece of advice you would give your, your peers trying to go along a similar journey? Um, replication is great. Deduplication is is fabulous. All these things, all the technology really enables everything. Um, get your business involved because uh, they're the they're the ones who can make it happen for you financially, and uh, never miss the opportunity of a crisis. <laughs> Nancy Majors, <laughs> thanks very much. Love to have you on. Uh, we'll see you uh, at EMC World, and really appreciate your insights. Okay. Th thanks. Thanks again. All right. Thanks for watching everybody. This has been Cube Conversations with Dave Vellante and we'll see you next time.